Good afternoon, everyone. In my quest to look for the future of our agriculture, I visited Taiwan Hydroponic Development Company, Vertical Hydroponic Grow Tube Systems. Rob Virgin took me around for the day and explained that these can be implemented outdoors on roofs, hung on walls. They can be disassembled and taken as a single food tube, if you will, that'll regrow itself because of the coconut coir in the center there. Look at the output on this. We saw instance after instance. Design's incredibly easy to prevent mold and fungus buildup. He has several orders already. And, and then later in the day, we visited an aquaponics facility. Had to make our way through one of these old neighborhoods that they're refurbishing to put an agricultural zone behind this where it's an experimental greenhouse aquaponics, aeroponics, and anything in between. If you have an idea, they'll leave space in the new greenhouses open for you. Again, we're talking about indoor agriculture. Here we go. This is a perfect example. That is just three weeks difference. And look at the size of the plants already. Hydroponics experiments going on. But the best thing about it was they are fully functional. The amount of lettuce that they're putting out there just goes from the small cubes with the seedlings right up into the interim production. And they even had aeroponics. Let's take you on a tour of some of the newest innovation out here in Asia happening with food growing as we move into the Grand Solar Minimum. And if you want more in-depth analysis on these same issues, try weekly podcast mini Ice Age Conversations. Trying my best to explain how our lives are going to change as food prices rise and the society reset button has been pushed in this 400 year cycle from our sun. And a quick FYI, with all the things going on across social media at the moment, I'm also loading my channel over on BitChute. You can jump over there, Adapt2030, as well as Mike Adams' new site, Real.Video. And with the Grand Solar Minimum intensifying, I have been looking for indoor vertical farming solutions because I really believe that's where the investment plays will be. It has to be low tech, easy maintenance, high yield. And here we go. I think I found something you're really going to like. Vertical hydroponic grow tube systems. Rob Virgin, starting Taiwan Hydroponics Development Company. You can find a lot of images and installations at taiwanhydroponics.com. So Rob invited me over on Saturday morning, says, hey, come up to the rooftop and take a look at what we're doing up there. We have a few other test facilities around we can wander throughout the afternoon and take a look and see what's growing and how we're growing. Right away, you'll notice that the tube system can be disassembled. Now, beyond being on rooftops, one of the great things is it can be hung on walls or it can be hung anywhere inside greenhouses. As long as there's vertical stacks, you can start growing something. So this is an example of what was on what's considered a rooftop installation. And when you put up four or five of these in a row, you can make up a full wall garden. The tubes are quite easy to explain. Aeration on both the right and left side to prevent mold and fungus so there's more airflow. Center coconut coir, special tool you can push in there, make a little bit of opening, put the plant roots in, and then you just drip the water through. Now the coir itself has a lot of nutrients and at the same time you can mix in liquid fertilizers that they also offer. Center is also made to make water drain away more easily and then the bottom you'll see the coupler there. A deep look into the tube. Very simple, very sturdy. Notice the shape. Very difficult to bend this. Even if you step on it, it does not break or bend. And looking at the bottom, sturdy and simple as well. Everything can be disassembled. And taking a look at the back, you have to realize that this has been on that roof for three years. Wear and tear on it, minimal. It's a drip feed system that operates on a simple pump and a timer. So what you can do with this is actually disassemble this where you can take one of the tubes off and transport it as a single tube, a living food tube, if you will. Restaurants and farmers markers are starting to grow this way where they'll bring the actual tube and then you just clip off what you would like in terms of fresh produce. Or if you're going to a salad bar, you can clip off what you like as well. 
Rob said he's taken these to a couple parties and just put that on the middle of the table. And then people are like, wow, come by and make your own salads during dinner parties. Very lightweight as well. And then once you're done, once it's clipped, just go and hang it back up again. The plants will start to regrow. So we were talking about yields. This is some spearmint here. Spearmint, peppermint, they like a lot of water. So these drip feed systems. Look at the yield coming off of these tubes. And all the images I took myself. So taking a look at other types of medicinal plants, herbs and spices that are being grown in these same tubes. The density is very lush, high yields off small area. And you notice the buckets at the bottom, those aren't for water. Those are to hold that system down in higher winds. These are some of the native plants around in Taiwan that are used for uh, medicinal purposes as well as foods. And off the roof, that is a movie set that you're taking a look at where they do shoot sagas, soap operas, and some movies. Interesting placement on that. And glimpsing into Rob's balcony here, this is another type of grow system there in the corner. Let me zoom that in for you. Tower system. So again, you can place these anywhere and they all operate. Under that, what looks like wood is a container to catch the water and also a water pump with a timer. So everything is just reflowing on a timed system. And then from there, he said, hey, you know, we have a couple orders coming in. We've been manufacturing and have a bunch of tubes ready for one of our customers. Would you like to see what we've got? And of course I would. I was kind of curious how they can scale this out because when we come into the grand solar minimum, we're talking about we're going to need millions of these tubes. And with LED lighting, and coming into disused factories or shopping malls, this would be really easy to install. They come as a standard set height, and you can choose to have the coconut coir fitted for you as delivery, or you can fit it yourself. You can buy the sheets, which they also offer. Simple hook, and then it just pulls right through into the center, and you can actually see where the two pieces come together, and that's what they use a tool for you to slide it in there, make a little hole, and then put drop your seed or the sprout root system inside there and you're ready to go. So then in the afternoon, headed out to an area outside Taipei. It was an old neighborhood from the 1900s. Now, what they're starting to do is refurb these buildings and then also turn it into an ag zone and open it up to the public or any kind of students, researchers. So home aquaponics has built this using their own funds. They rely on donations, but they have some new greenhouses that they're putting up here. A look inside. So what they want this to be is more of an experimentation for hanging vertical gardens and anything in floating aeroponics. So Rob was there to install. This is what the finished unit looks like right next to what was a traditional drip through kind of a, an aeroponics system as well where the water drips from one basket to the next. And you can see they have a bit of lettuce growing out of that bottom one. Everything's feeding off just a, uh, a reused, recycled water system. And you can see the system here that they were with the caps that are laying on the ground, how easy it is to put it together. So you hang them up with the hooks. The caps aren't on there. The drainage is not in there yet, but a few screws, some power drills, and it's really easy to assemble. Anybody can do it. And at the end of it, they planted some seeds in there. And then after three weeks, this is the result. And from this point forward, then it's going to continue to increase in the density. So a little bit zoom in here, really get an idea of how quickly that this can grow out. So I encourage you to jump over to Facebook page, check out Home Aquaponics because they do have an enormous amount of research going on there. And again, this is open to the public. It's not a research facility limited to a university that only accepts certain people and certain ideas. They're like, if you have an idea, come and test it out. So one of the first build outs there was this, what I talked about, Aeroponics Rock System. And then they also had some floating gardens in there, if you want to term it that. These are snapped together, plug and play with the cups in an aquaponics system. And they were growing different types of vegetables with a couple uh, different types of aquaponic floating pond systems, if you will. They made out of plastic, snapped the cup in there. The fish are underneath it. They had goldfish, probably about 30 goldfish in there some koi, and then also full-on aeroponics, what you consider the regular clay pebbles here that drain, rise, and drain on a time system. 
Everything fan controlled, really well done. Everything's brand new inside there. So I said, oh, hey, look what's out the back. Let's take a look at that. They have traditional orchards. You can go in and plant if you have a garden. I was talking about doing some moringa out here. They already had some people growing out different types of teas, etc., with the dried flowers and medicinal herbs. So this is one of the greenhouses, one of the first ones they started that has functional aquaponics going on there. You can see the fish tanks at the very end and then the lettuce yields coming out. They're supplying an enormous amount of restaurants and hotels. Rob's over on the left. I'm here in the center. So it's kind of like a factory system. What they do is they take the seedlings and they put them in the plugs first and they're floating on these rafts. And then at the end, this is what you get. So how do you go from the plugs to the end result here? Take a look down at the floating factory, if you will. So again, you can see the progression. And as they harvest at the far end, they just slide the styrofoam trays. They actually just float them up and come back and start the process all over again. So I'll take you through the process. Small seedlings, those are put into the trays. And then they have an enormous amount of different types of lettuce. And once they reach a certain size, then they retransplant them into something that looks like this. They start to bunch them up. You'll get mid-size, larger size. And at the end, they're just waiting for the last growth stage to get into to harvest it. So whatever comes up first, they try to put everything together by type of lettuce, makes it a little bit easier. But again, these are four trays deep and they're continually harvesting. So since we went on a weekend, they ended up doing a lot of harvesting because Friday, Saturday, the restaurant and hotel demand is much higher. So they'd harvested most of what was considered mature at the far end down there, but look how much is still left. It brings us through the interim phase here, two weeks after they initially put the cubes in, and then it just keeps growing out from there. And they leave the spacing for rotation based on how wide or how thick the lettuce variety is going to become. Zoom in for you, you can see that. It's a great way for them to generate revenue to be able to continue to buy equipment there along with the donations that they receive for people who like this type of you know venue in the city. People can come out there, visit, take a look, bring the kids. It's a great day and there's some walking around there as well. And it's in that old part of town. I really like that, you know, those old brick buildings. But anyway, let's take a look at the types of produce coming out of there and open your mind as to what you can do in your own local area as well. Different types of lettuces that you'll see strewn about coloration in the background. I don't even know the name of this type. It's a little bit bitter. The chefs were in there and they come specifically for this type. This is one of those highly sought after types for at least the hotel crowd was what was explained. And we get in, they were doing some different types of baby arugula and spinach, things that you'd be familiar with. Then another variety of high value lettuce. Hadn't seen this one before. So I saw two firsts in this grow facility. So let me walk you through here. I shot this video from start to finish going back. So you can see exactly what the float is, approximately how wide the spacing is how dense you can get these to grow together and how much food you can really produce. Now just think if you only had one of these raceways here, how much you could really get off that versus four, five, six, ten, or however many that you can put out through how many greenhouses. And as we come to the very end there, all this water is being recirculated. Where is it being recirculated? Straight into the fish tanks. So everything has its own bio loop going on and those are 4,000 liter tanks and they have four different types of fish at the very end there which they also sell off so it's a money-making facility and it's right here shown it can be done and also Rob Virgin's vertical grow tubes that is in my opinion one of the solutions we need for the grand solar minimum you can contact Rob over at TaiwanHydroponics.com or send an email info at TaiwanHydroponics.com. Tell him Dave sent you from ADAPT2030. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. It was an incredibly informative day in my life. And these are the ideas I want to share as we move forward. Also, Mini Ice Age Conversations weekly podcast. Again, it's all about bringing these ideas to the forefront so we can work together to find solutions as our crop yields decline, descending deeper into the new grand solar minimum.